Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building a car parts shop on the bottom of High Street on my N-Gage model railway. In this episode I will show my approach to the building's interior and some of the details that I've added round the back. Join me then for Rev's Detail, finishing off a High Street building. I don't put lights in my buildings, so I only need the merest hint of an interior to show through the main entrance. I printed some basic shapes and cut them from card. I used PVA glue to stick them to a base. It's a simple double walled entrance with some posters of Chandwell legend Johnny McShay on the inner wall. I'm using this wide photo of a car parts supplier, which I roll around my fingers to make it curved. Glued into place behind the entrance, it can be seen from all angles without it looking distorted. I print simple double doors to sticky label and stuck them to thick acetate. When cut out using the sticky label method, they pass as decent enough shop doors, especially when dropped into the entrance like this. I glue a second set to the front wall. So the completed entrance is just a simple module that can slot into place from underneath the building. This looks decent enough. I used a bit of watercolour paint to touch up some of the door edges. When I started Revs, I was inspired by the frontage of Speedo. That's a car parts supplier in real life in Crook in County Durham. So it's not a Wesleyan assembly hall, but Speedo occupies one of the oldest surviving purpose-built cinemas in the UK, and it has a frontage that reminds me a lot of Revs. As a quick aside, the amazing auditorium is still in situ above the shop. Look up the pictures online, it really is fascinating. Anyway, you can see behind the glazing just the merest hint of an interior behind the glass. In Chandwell, this interior will only be part way up the glazing. The top will be open to the back window. This is in some kind of nod to the open space above the shop in Speedo. I cut some simple rectangles from card and then I used basic brush strokes of watercolour paint to make them a streaky, dirty colour. These will all stick on top of each other like this. Once stuck, I lightened it up a bit as it did seem to be a little bit too dark. With these little extension pieces at the edge, I just slotted the piece into place behind the big window and used PVA glue to hold it in place. It is a little bit subtle behind the milky acetate, but as several viewers pointed out last time, this just makes the windows look dirty. I think the effect works okay. Maybe it's still a little bit dark though. The windows round the back are based on the absolutely huge windows behind Batley Methodist Church. I made the frames using the sticky label method, but this time in two parts. One part has a large hole cut out. By doing this, a decent effect of a sash window can be obtained. It's a subtle 3D effect, but it really does work. I used simple blue watercolour paint to add the Revs branding to the frames. Watercolour paint works really well because it absorbs into the sticky label and leaves no white edges and it doesn't colour the glazing. I used matte varnish on the backs of the window to add a layer of grime to the interior. I trimmed the bottom off one of the window frames and modelled the window in an open position. Scale Scene's painted brick texture completed the ground floor windows. I cut a roof support and stuck it in the middle of the building. A couple of rectangles should be enough to hint at an interior floor when seen through the windows. I then used dark colours to cover the lightly coloured card. The steeply pitched roof was made from strips of scale scenes roof tiles on top of 1mm thick card. I cut the ridge at an angle using my scalpel along a steel rule. This allows the two pieces to butt against each other really well, but if you do this, do cut into some scrap card. I cut slices out of my mat and I won't ever get those back. Elastic bands held the roof in place while the glue dried, so I could appreciate the views through the top floor of the building, so inspired by that cinema from Crook. I designed and built an extension for the back using basic techniques. Cut, assemble, wrap, stick, stab, fold, glaze, and stick. I was inspired by the rusty downspout that I showed in Otley in last week's video. I printed some rusty white texture, wrapped it around some half millimetre card, and chopped off a small slice. This made the gutters and downspouts. 
I think they've come out a little bit thick and overscale. This technique worked really well on the Polo building, but I'm less happy with it here. I added a bit of ground between Town Hall and Revs. The torn poster of Johnny McShay was added to the rear doors. Lintels, sills and iron bracing was added to the back wall. I've still to weather the building. There's some debate amongst my channel members about whether the graffiti is too bright. I'm undecided at the moment. I'm so very nearly finished with the back of High Street now. I'm working on the rear Town Hall extension. And then onto that water building from Burley and Wharfdale that I showed last week. And then, finally, I can finish the stream and reveal its name. I also have an oft-requested feature to ceremonially add to the dirty waters. It's a gift I received from a viewer and I'm really excited to reveal it soon. Here's a reminder of how I made the first part of that stream. Take a look at that video and then join me next time to see how I get on. Until then then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.